Hey guys, Malkuth 1974 coming at you with another tutorial, this time on our Kerbal Space Program. Uh, it's not really a tutorial, as in a uh, little something I want to show you guys. Um, the question always comes up, and this is a question I always had, what is the max, the minimum orbital height or altitude that you can have on a body of a planet? Now, for most of us, when I was playing for the long t longest time, I always thought you had to be pretty high to uh, escape the whole gravity thing. And, uh, you know, gravity plays a big role in uh, orbital mechanics, but its role is more limited. It's a limited thing because you can actually beat gravity. Uh, the limiting factor in a orbit of a planet is actually its atmosphere. So, like Kerbin, uh, you have to be at 70k to actually have a orbit or it'll decay and you'll crash into the planet and die. Uh, the same thing with Duna. I think Duna is 50k or 60k. Uh, Duna, Eve, uh, everything with an atmosphere you have to have a certain orbital uh, height to keep it or it decays and you uh, crash into the atmosphere and then you crash into the planet and you die. Uh, but moons or planetary bodies without an atmosphere are a little bit different because they don't have an atmosphere. Uh, so all you have to deal with is gravity. On a planet you have to deal with gravity and the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is what takes, which slows you down and kills you and uh, all that great wonderful stuff. So, thinking of a planet like Minmus that doesn't have any gravity, it's really really easy to uh, have a uh, an orbital height of say uh, four, you have four k. Uh, uh, you might. Why would you want? You, you can have an actual orbit of that because it's really easy. The limiting factor for moons is basically the mountain ranges. So if you have a mountain that is six uh, k, then you probably want to play it safe and have an orbital, an orbit of seven k, just for you can clear the mountains. Now. The moon, the moon, the mun, uh, I'm going to show you. You can get at about 4K for the moon, no problem. Uh, we want to see how close 4K actually is. Think of when you're landing, you usually pass through that. So we're just going to fast forward through here, and we will be back when I have this all set up. You can watch it all unfold. As you say, I just set my uh, parathesis as a uh, five point. I kind of lost it on that one. Uh, I have to actually go into retro, and we'll get it down to four. There we go. There we go. We got four. So what we're gonna do is, uh, when we get to PE, we're gonna burn uh, at uh, retro again, and we're gonna bring that down to four. So let's get over there. I'm not going to show you guys. The only problem with uh, having an orbit this low is, of course, you're going to lose time acceleration. And you're going to lose quite a bit of it. I think you can only have 10 on here when you do this. This shouldn't take me too long, and we will start the burn now. And we'll kittle it right there, and we'll kill it a little bit more, and boom! Ah, we lost a little bit there. Actually, we're still safe, I think. I'll uh, 
Hopefully we're safe. I think we'll just basically skim a mountain if we uh, actually do that. So, let's take a look at where we are. Planet-wise. This is the orbit that we're in. We'll get rid of smart ass here. Unfortunately, we're on the dark side of the moon. But as you can tell, we are actually going that way. So when I do get back, I want to be pro-grad. There we go. Did a quick little move. We are now at 399. We should rise. That's the mountain side, of course, that I can... Kind of sucks that we're on uh, the dark side, so we will actually fast forward it here, and this will take a tremendous, 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 tremendous amount of time, unfortunately. So we'll just fast forward it. Pause for you guys. It'll be real quick. Be right back. Should be able to fast forward with these guys though, because they're on the ground. We'll turn the light tower on. There we go. He is coming from. I would have to target him to see him, I think. Ah, there he is. That's my ship passing through. We can actually speed up a little bit doing this. He is at eight kilometers. He's flying right by us. Let's see if we can get to him. That's not him, that's not him, that's not him. No, I can't. Let's uh, go back to Space Center. See if we can actually see the flyby of the base. Lander, moon. Oh, we can't see the lights from over here. That's a bummer. All right, let's actually go back. And we'll go back to the base. Moon base one. That way we can just fast forward it because we're on the ground and it won't matter so much. We can wait till he gets on the right side of the planet, which he's right there. So we'll just give it a fast forward here. He's entering the bright. As you can tell, he's still totally in orbit. So, space center. But go to him. And we should be on the bright side of the moon, and we can actually see how close we are to the planet. We are at 3811. Comparably. Well, how does this work? Well. You know, Scott Manley would explain this so much better. I shouldn't really try to explain this stuff, but you're falling all the time when you're in orbit. So that's where uh, uh, you lose gravity. That's why people can float, you know, and the astronauts and stuff, they can float because they're always falling. What's causing you not to hit the ground is not that there's no gravity. There is absolute gravity. The gravity is actually pulling your ship. The problem is that you're going so fast and the fact that the moon, or the moon, on this, in this case, is a, is a sphere, is that you're beating gravity by always beating the ground. So you're at that curve, so you're always basically going over. You're never going to hit the ground, because now we have a stable orbit, and you're not going to, you're always, you know, it was the canon theory, if you ever want to look that up on online, the canon theory, if you, uh, if you shoot the cannon uh, at one speed, it, it goes a little ways and uh, falls on the ground. If you shoot it at uh, 
another speed. Uh, it goes a little bit farther, you know, and it hits the ground. Uh, but it went farther because you added more speed to the bo you added more speed to the cannonball. If you shoot it again with more, even more power, uh, it goes even farther, and then it hits the ground. Well, eventually, if you put enough speed on it the cannonball is going to shoot so far that it's never actually going to hit the ground because you're, uh, you're never going to actually, because you're going too fast, you're beating uh, the speed of the earth with your own speed, so you're in a, basically in an orbit, that's, what, that's the whole thing of orbital mechanics. So what is this good for? You might be thinking it's a good way to land if you want to uh, uh, land in a certain spot. Uh, in theory that's okay, but uh, the problem becomes where you have to be able to slow down your orbital speed enough to actually, before you hit the ground. And at this height, I would probably most likely perish. I don't have, if I had a big enough rocket, I could probably do it. I tried to do it, I was experimenting and I tried to do it, but it didn't work, so. Anyway, so that, there you go. That is it. That's about it, guys. It's not cool. Just thought I'd share that with you. Something I uh, I learned. So now I'm passing it on to you guys.